in those days he would be with his boys and suddenly he would say i need blood i need blood i need blood they would run out straight away somebody must must go for it the police knew him arrested several times but you know he's now born again and that's the reason why what god is directing us to teach you now is to put you in the front line of god's last agenda for this country and other nations of the earth We just came back from Leeds and my eyes opened during this week. God did extraordinary things as you have been praying. There is a testimony that I shared just with the leaders during the prayer, but another testimony that I didn't share with them, which I did with them in New Cross, is this. There is a young man in, you know, there was a young man in the meeting who his story is very, very interesting. He came to me and said, Apostle, I, I, I said, what can I do for you? She, he said, I just want to thank you. Oh, that's why you come to see me. You know, when I finish ministering, different people will see me, you know, for various things. I pray with them and God give me a prophetic word for them and stuff like that. And he said, I just want to say thank you. Tell me what's the story. I came to recognize. He said, well, you passed through us last year and it changed the whole of my life. Now, who is this young man? He was the head of gangs in the whole of um, South Yorkshire. He was, he was the head of gangs. You remember when we went to uh, Jamaica? Those of you who, who are here at that time? Yeah, wave your hands to me if you remember. The Jamaican, um, the boy who was the head of Yadis, who, who gave his life to Christ. Now, it's just like that. The same shape they have is. Tall guy, slim, you know, but he was commanding all these, you know, guys. And it came to my knowledge also by his testimony that in those days, he would be with his boys. And suddenly he would say, I need blood. I need blood. I need blood. They would run out straight away. Somebody must, must go for it. Somebody must go for it. Once he says, I need blood. I need blood. They rush out. You see? Someone like that, the police knew him, arrested several times. But you know that those who are boss of evil, the way they do it is so clean that I mean, uh, legally, it will be very hard to implicate them. Until God will expose them. Because you will not see them in the act. That's what always happens. Those who go on the foot soldiers, they are the ones who always become victims. They will remain. But you know, He's now born again. And he said to me, when you passed last year, you know, there are some statements you made. And he changed my life forever. I was able to minister to him, to his wife now, and their little girl that's, you know, he's now a settled man. He now set up after the meeting last year. He said one of the fruits that came out of it is they set up, you know, um, a ministry just to go and get the boys back to God. As Satan had used them before. God is now using him to redeem these people. And he said that, you know, when you came last year also, there's something you said, you know, that at any time you can go back to school. And then you gave the testimony of yourself going back to education. And I remember that he met me that time to tell me that, you know, at my age, will I be accepted? I said, yes, they will accept you. If you can take the step, that's it. He said, I'm now, I've now finished my first year in degree on psychology. I gave him a hug. God did extraordinary things during these leads. But let me tell you this, fire has been lit in leads, and we are going to lead until it becomes a conflagration. You agree with me? Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all that dwell therein. Because God has fortified every one of you for years, but now God wants to show you forth to the nations. You remember the prayers we prayed yesterday? Ask of me, I will give you nations for inheritance and the ends of the earth as a possession. And we prayed for all nations. 
all nations. This church has, I said in, in New Cross uh, just a few minutes ago, that the ship of CFT have started to sail. And this house has received a trumpet that God has blasted that knows no retrieve. And that's the reason why what God is directing us to teach you now is to put you in the front line of God's last agenda for this country and other nations of the earth. And that's what we are teaching you. There is none of you who is not called by God. All right? I've given you a lot of scriptures about that. But what happened is this. When, when a child is born, who will become the prime minister of the country or who will become the chief justice of the country or will become the engineer and stuff like that? The potential is in that child waiting to be nurtured. A child who is born with a great destiny but is unfortunate in the sense that the people, the house where he was born, the parents are just relegates and the people around him are just relegate. Though the child is appointed and ordained to be a great ruler, but because the child is a victim while he was growing up and no one to help him, children like that grow up and they become nothing. Some go to their graves without achieving the goals God has given them. And some along the path, by the mercy of God, they come across somebody who will lead them to a place. It could be a church. It could be salvation. And then they begin to recognize that they have a sense of living, that is a value in them. And then they begin to come up with the value. So it's what you do with what God has given you that determines what you become. Now I've been teaching you on the mystery of salvation. The mystery of salvation. And today, my concentration will be your heart and mind. And then next week, I will go into, you know, um, um, you, know um, uh, you know, the things you need to do to, to, to fulfill destiny. I think there is, there, is a, there is a title that God gave me that is quite interesting for next week that we will look at. So next week, we'll be looking into winning the battle of destiny. Winning the battle of destiny. But I need to prepare you today before you go into that. You remember 2 Chronicles, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if a man is in Christ Jesus, it's a new creation. Let's read together, please. Hey, 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 don't give that to me. Is this Christ with Tabernacle Cathedral? Why are you talking like that? <laughs> Come on, let's read the cathedral way. Therefore... <laughs> Give me the King James Version so that I can be a little bit more fundamental. Yes? Shall we read that together, please? Interesting. I love the word if anyone. Anyone means anyone. Though your sins be as dark as scarlet, though you used to be a murderer, a slanderer, though you might be someone who has spoken a lot contempt against God, <laughs> maybe you are one of those who kill others. But when you are in Christ Jesus, it makes a difference. All things are passed away, and all things, and I love that too. The old is gone. The new has come, NIV says. All things, all things, not excluding anything. You know, lawyers are very strange. When they want to catch you, they will say, not lim they will say that this, it includes and not limited to, isn't it? When they say it includes and not limited to, if all what the rights included, if you think that's what they are saying, you have just run into their hands. Because the not limited to is so robust. But this scripture is not like that. Because it's the word of the living God. It says all things that could be included or excluded is gone. Your past is gone. Let me tell you something. 
How many of you here who are, you know, mature people, we begin to think when you were five, you used to talk like, uh, uh, you know, you call, you call S, S, and, you know, you call rice, wise. And you call, you call, uh, you know, all those things. And now you are old. And when you think about when you used to do those things, it hinders you now? Come on. Your past is gone. That is what men can talk about too. Your present is you. That's what you are doing right now. And your future is God. No man can talk about it. <laughs> No man can detect or determine what it's going to be for you in the future. So therefore, the doorway to a certain future is to be born again. To accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and then you have had an access into the future. The mystery of salvation is that. The Bible says you are a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Believe it or don't believe it, it is so. So, this lecture is to open our understanding to some of the new things so that you will not begin, you will not continue to live your life with the heart of the old things or allow the mind of the old to determine what your future is. You may be bankrupt in the old, forget about it, there's a better future for those who are bankrupt. You know, you might, you might be a renegade, you might be someone that nobody even cares about you. There is somebody greater than every man who cares about you. He holds your future. And he says, all things have become new. It doesn't matter what difficulty you are going through. You are, you have accepted a God who knew the difficulties before sending you to that family? Are you with me now? If he did not have a, a way out, because our God is a God that is excited about testimonies, you know, and you cannot have a testimony if you did not have a testing. And so when he sends you to the place of testing, it's because a testimony is waiting for you at the dawn of the day. And though your night may tarry, it may tarry for a while, but certainly there is a morning of joy coming for you. But you have to be in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I love God so much. He doesn't miss his words. Very briefly today, we'll look into it. So we have looked at new creature. We have looked at being sons of God. We have looked at uh, um, being a royal priesthood. But today, we are going to zoom into this. The key, the key to living in God is living, being led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit, I call it. The key to live in God is to, to be led by the Spirit. To live in God is to be led by His Holy Spirit. So I call this, therefore, living in the Spirit. You know, something about you and I is this. I am a spirit and you are. We live in the body, which is our garments, and we have a soul. I did a lecture among you some time ago, and I will revisit it in this month of October to, to next month. Next month is my month. I'm really pumped up for next month, the month of November. You know, it's about the seven things about your spirit, about your spirit, your heart, your mind. We we'll visit it again. I am a spirit. I live in the body. And I have a soul. This is the reason why what determines your act and your your conduct is the spirit that lives within you whoever your spirit submit to whatever spirit your spirit submit to is what determines your attitude and your conduct ephesians chapter 1 verse chapter 2 from verse 1 as for you, you were dead in your transgressions or your transgressions and sin in which you used to live when you followed the part of this world. Yes? 
follow the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom <clears throat> of the air. It says, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Now, this scripture tells you and I that some people on earth who are led by the spirit, and this spirit is called the spirit who is the prince, the ruler of the kingdom of the air. I showed you about four Sundays ago, that spirit is called Lucifer with all demons. And when I was teaching you about the number of heavens that exist, first heaven, second heaven, third heaven, when I was trying to establish the fact that it's only three heavens that exist, contrary to what some people have talked about, seven heavens, 21 heavens, they're liars. <laughs> when I was helping you to understand the, the, the jurisdiction of Satan, which is the limit of the operation of demons, the Bible helps us to know it's where you can have the air, oxygen. Anywhere you cannot breathe in air, Satan cannot operate. And this scripture validates that. It said, the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. And that's Satan and demons. If anybody tells you that, oh, they found Satan in the moon, they're liars. There's no air there. Oh, we found Satan in mass. They're talking nonsense. <laughs> Hallelujah, forevermore. <laughs> I think these will have known something yet. They will know it shortly by your manifestations. Yes. And this scripture says, this spirit walks in those who are disobedient. So you and I, before we got born again, this is the one that influenced us, the devil. <laughs> He will make you do things and you will feel you are the one who decided. That's my decision. You know, mommy was telling me the things that God told her to teach you during this, um, uh, the convention. Make sure you don't miss the convention. I played with you. I've told you when God said October, you start, you fire out. <laughs> don't miss it, man. Don't miss any day. Every day we come with their own knowledge, insight, and impartation. While she was discussing that with me, my head blew up, and I said, okay, I will join you in this ministration. Uh, the, the, uh, Pastor, Pastor Fumi, what's the name again? L midlife crisis. Yes, the Lord told her to teach on midlife crisis. The crisis you wake up at your mid-age and discover that it's all around you. What caused it? What solution? A good number of us are going through one aspect of midlife crisis now <clears throat> and the other. <clears throat> but she's going to look at what causes those things and what can a person do to get out of it. And I will come in and tell you about a solution. But if you look at this scripture, so this spirit works in everyone who is not born again. And then he told us that the 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 manifestation of that spirit is disobedient to God. I own my life. I have my life. I can do anything in life with my life until you destroy that life and then you regret that life. And when people do things like that and they regret, the devil is not there. He's just laughing at them. I would get them now. But then the next verse says, all of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature. Did we see that now? Because we are under the control of his spirit. Anything sinful, we love to do it. We are attracted. We gravitate towards it. Our sinful nature and thoughts, desires and thoughts, following our desires and thoughts like the rest, where we are by nature object of wrath. Stop there. Now, let me help you know this, that the Bible says clearly that the demise of man emanates or arises from the spirit that informs your thoughts, yes, 
and that is responsible for your action thereafter. I cannot be convicted in the court of law because I thought I should steal. Correct? But I could be convicted in the court of law if I steal, which is the act, isn't it? However, really, too, the court of law have this, that if I commit a crime, do I have intention to do it? So if I have intention to do it, and then I carry out the act, then I'm culpable. Am I talking sense? This is something that no, any man can understand. So I cannot say I did it by mistake because I premeditated my action. Okay? Now, check this. Because this is what I'm going to talk to you just today. If you understand this today, you are ready for next week. Now, this scripture says to both of us, it says like the rest of men, that is because we are under the influence of the spirits of Satan. We were, past tense, by nature, so it means that the influence of spirit will take their root in the nature of man. It's that when those spirit influences you and I, whatever spirit influences us, we will come to a place where what we carry out will be our nature. Let me give you an example. The spirit of anger entered into somebody. Who was not angry before? You grew up not being an angry person. And suddenly you built up this anger. <clears throat> and then you say, I know my anger. Satan is responsible to build you up. And the moment he can enter into your nature, that which you have built up in your thoughts, then he backs up. You are now on the steering wheel of anger or of attitude that you're carrying out. So that it now is in your nature, <clears throat> which means even when you don't like to do it, <clears throat> you will do it. You get what I'm saying now? So someone says, it's my nature. I know my own is anger. God deliver you. You will not know something bad for yourself. <laughs> because the Bible says anger resides in the laps of fools. That's what my, my Bible tells me. And we will not be a fool. I didn't hear your amen. Now, therefore, so if we can understand this very well, I will take you to the spirit, living in the spirit. Therefore, from this scripture, we understand that anyone that is influenced by the spirit of the air, we live or have an adapt, it will adapt, you know, you know in nature in accordance to the thoughts. However, he will begin to live in that which the enemy has, you know, developed in his thought. And he says to us, you will gravitate towards your nature, your body. Remember I told you the other time, how can a woman, you know, God gave you a good body. He blessed you and you look beautiful to yourself. How can such a woman just open her nakedness to everybody to be looking at? Come on now. Man is not animal. Even animals sometimes, they have shame. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Flight CFT Word 2021 is scheduled to take off on 25th of October 2021 and will be landing on 31st October 2021. Your pilots and co-pilots are Reverend Omar and Apostle ATB Williams, taking you on a journey. Theme, leaving every pressure behind. If you're one of many women under so much pressure to juggle and multitask, or just want to grow in the Lord, Reverend Omar and Apostle Williams will share from the throne of grace how to empower you on managing daily lives with God. This round trip starts with Anna in the Temple daily prayer, workout and pampering sessions, marriage seminar, health promotion, and many more. Finally, the plane will be landing on 31st October 2021 for Thanksgiving Sunday. Boarding gate is CFT Cathedral, Ebenezer Building, 186 Power Street, Woolwich, SE18 6NL. We look forward to welcoming you on board. Behold, I am coming.
coming soon. Between the years of 1984 and 1999, Apostle Alfred Williams was taken to heaven on various occasions where he was shown global events that would lead up to the year of 2015. And in 1999, the Apostle was powerfully shown the coming calendar for the world. I want you to understand that the first war was in heaven, the first victory was in heaven, and it takes the man of heaven to win the earthly battle. In December 2009, God instructed Apostle Alfred Williams to go into all the world and let them know that I am coming. Beloved, with this powerful instruction behind us, it is now time for us to arise, shine, and win every house for Jesus. Now is the time for the final preparation of the Bride of Christ, a final trumpet call to righteousness in this time that is running out before the rapture of the church. Join us on this dynamic campaign to reach every house in Britain. They need to hear the call. Who will tell them if we do not? This is the prophesied time of harvest. It is now time for us to win.